My name is Barry Hahn. I'm the creative director and curator here at the Serving Heritage and Culture Center. What you're going to see is our latest exhibit. It's called Women Making Waves. And it's about four very influential surfers from four different generations. Joyce Hoffman, who was a competitive surfer in the 60s. Brel Sun, who was a role model and competitive surfer in the 70s. Lisa Anderson, competitive surfer in the 90s and kind of responsible for helping launch the whole Roxy movement. And Stephanie Gilmore, who was a six-time world champ and currently sits in the number one position. We're starting out with Joyce Hoffman. She was the first um, professional female surfer. She actually got sponsored by Triumph. Wherever she would go and compete, they would have a car waiting for her. She also was the first female to have her own surfboard with her name on it. Her stepfather, Walter Hoffman, and his brother, Flippy Hoffman, were North Shore pioneers that came from California, went over there, lived in Quonset Huts, surfed the North Shore in the 40s and 50s, and she was a driven competitive surfer. She said she would practice when it was really bad because she knew surfing conditions aren't always great, and so she wanted to be able to surf in any condition, and she wanted to win above all else. She was one of the very first role models. Because of Joyce's influence, they figured she would be a good spokesperson for an anti-smoking campaign. Most surfers don't smoke, but some do. I don't know how you can light up a cigarette and then paddle out. The American Cancer Society hired her to be part of their campaign in the 1960s. I don't smoke cigarettes, so they were hoping that would influence young people not to smoke. Next up we have Rel Sun, also known as the Queen of Makaha. She was the first North Shore lifeguard. She was a competitive surfer in the 70s. She also helped get the whole female version of the competitive circuit going and help raise funding for them because girls had to basically pay their own way to be in contests. She embodied the Aloha spirit. I mean, when you think of Aloha, you think of Duke Hanamoku, Rel Sun. Um, she started a contest for kids, and because she didn't have any funding or sponsorship, she actually took her own trophies and gave them away to the kids. So um, very few of her own trophies exist, except maybe some people like Sonny Garcia and some of those guys may have them from back when. Unfortunately, Rel contracted breast cancer, but she battled on and continued to surf and teach and host radio shows for another 13 years before it finally took her in 1998. So this beautiful glass sculpture was actually used to hold Rel's ashes in and they paddled out in an outrigger canoe and then dumped these ashes in the ocean and then Rel's daughter Jan was gracious enough to allow us to have it here as part of our exhibit. It's a very precious item. This surfboard was shaped by Master Shaper Jerry Lopez, you know, Mr. Pipeline. It's one of his famous pipeline guns and the artwork was done by Phil Roberts who's just a phenomenal artist and it's done after one of Art Brewer's photographs of Rel. We had a gala recently that was a fundraiser for us and this was the highest auction item and kind of the star of that evening and our founder um, actually bid on it and won it so we could display it here permanently at Surfing Heritage. So here we have Lisa Anderson and she's definitely one of the most influential female surfers of all time. Four-time world champ but also responsible for helping to launch the whole Roxy line of board shorts uh, along with Randy Hill and she's still involved with Roxy uh, although she doesn't compete anymore she probably could because she's a really good surfer she was on the cover of Surfer magazine and it said Lisa surfs better than you and she still does she's a wonderful spokesperson for that 
line, but just, you know, a great role model. She ran away from home because she wanted to surf so bad that she came to California, lived in Huntington Beach, and just kind of scrounged around, but was so determined that she became world champ. And she had a daughter, and she competed through that period of having a daughter and being a mom. Just a real role model. So here we have a pair of Lisa's famous board short. She wasn't that comfortable in competing in bikini bottoms and there really weren't board shorts made for girls at that point. Um, so they developed these that you know would hold up. Um, don't look like guys trunks but could be used in competition. You didn't have that embarrassing moment of having to pull your uh, bikini back on and that was the whole beginning of Roxy was from things like this board shorts here. So here we have Stephanie Gilmore, another fierce competitor. She's from Australia. She's a six-time world champ. Only one other person has a better record than her as far as women go, and that's Lane Beachley. And she's currently number one, so she's on track to maybe tie Lane this year and possibly beat her. She's just a beautiful surfer to watch. So she's one of my favorites as far as females go. And she and Carissa, she's a sweetheart. She's musical and uh, she might be our world champ once again. <laughs>